Hi, I'm Midnight Mule and this channel is called What Was Written because I want to look at what was written. Ordinarily I'll be looking at what Watchtower have written but today I won't be looking at what Watchtower have written at all. I'm just looking at what's written in the Bible. But it's a Watchtower subject and it's to do with the two witness rule. The two witness rule is being talked about quite a lot at the moment on social media and has been talked about for many years when it comes to the Watchtower because they hide behind the, the two witness rule when certain accusations or crimes are committed. They say, oh, well, there aren't two witnesses to this particular crime or sin, as they'd probably call it. So we can't do anything about it and we have to do what the Bible says. Now, there are two things about this. One, if something is a crime, it should be reported to the authorities, of course. But if they want to have their own judicial system to decide if somebody can still be a member of their club, that's up to them. And what they call sin isn't what necessarily other people call sin. So, for example, smoking is a sin if you're a Jehovah's Witness, which to a non-Jehovah's Witness may seem a bit extreme. But if you think of it as to be a member of their club, you're not allowed to smoke, then you just accept as being a member of their club, you can't smoke. So there are two passages in scripture they tend to go to for the two witness rule. The two witness rules cause a lot of problems, but if people just read the verses, I don't think they should cause a problem at all. And this is true for anything that Watchtower do. You can look at anything that Watchtower say, nearly anything controversial, or even just anything plain they say. All you need to do is look at the context. What are the verses before, what are the verses after, to whom are they speaking? And you can find out then whether it's being applied correctly. What Watchtower do a lot is they'll talk about a subject and they put a verse from here and a verse from somewhere else and a verse from somewhere else. And it's really frustrating. If you just read the context, you'll see that what they're saying doesn't stand up. So first, copyright notice. I'm going to be using their version of the Bible from their website. And that's what we're looking at. So the first one we're going to look at is from Matthew 18. This is their first go-to verse for the two witness rule. Moreover, if your brother commits a sin, go and reveal his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. Now, what this doesn't say is you have to be a witness to the sin. You could just be aware of the sin. You could be aware because you were told by maybe a family member that a brother, somebody in the congregation, has committed a sin. At this point, you're not a witness. You're just going to meet him and say, look, I'm aware you've done this thing. And if he listens to you, ignoring any criminal activity where it might still need to be reported, let's supposing he was smoking. If he listens to you and he agrees and he's done wrong, you've gained a brother. That's the situation sorted. If he doesn't listen to you, this is where we get to the two witnesses. But verse 16, but if he does not listen, take along with you one or two more so that on every testimony, so that on the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter may be established. So these two or three witnesses are there to witness the conversation about you confronting him about smoking and you're not supposed to smoke and that smoking's a sin. These are not witnesses to the crime. These are witnesses to the conversation because of course when there's two or three witnesses, more truth may come out and he may repent and say, oh, I shouldn't have smoked or whatever the thing was keep going verse 17 if he does not listen to them speak to the congregation if he does not listen even to the congregation let him be to you just as a man of the nations and as a tax collector there is no way that the whole congregation would have witnessed the sin or it's unlikely the whole congregation would witness a sin and yet the previous verse verse 16 is their go-to verse about the two witnesses this is not two witnesses to the sin or to the crime. This is two witnesses to the conversation that the first person was having with the person who'd committed the sin or potentially committed the sin to decide on what's happening about it. You cannot use Matthew 18 verse 16 to say there have to be two witnesses to witness the sin. This is two or more witnesses to witness the conversation. And if those two doesn't make enough of a difference, it's the whole congregation that then witness the conversation and sees what happens. So there are two possible outcomes from this. When somebody commits a sin and they're confronted, either they repent 
or it will end up that the whole congregation will know about it or there's the option that when there's two witnesses involved in the conversation at that point he repents nothing can get covered up here the other one is Deuteronomy 19 they like to go to no single witness may convict another for any error or any sin that he may commit on the testimony of two witnesses or on the testimony of three witnesses the matter should be established should be established so if there are two or three witnesses that's it job done the sin happened so it's taken as read that's what happened obviously there are going to be times when only one person was a witness to a sin or a crime for this we're talking sins if there's only one witness what do we do if there's only one witness we don't ignore it but we need to be aware of the fact that one witness might be lying so what do we do we carry on reading the passage of scripture verse 16 if a malicious witness testifies against a man and charges him with some transgression the two men who have the dispute will stand before Jehovah before the priests and the judges who will be serving in those days so when it is the case that there's only one person who witnessed the crime it's one person's word against another then they stand before Jehovah and in those days he would have been represented by the priests and the judges so the watchtower's equivalent they might then have well they might decide to have some elders the actual biblical model from the new testament is to have people who are spiritual so it could just be anyone in the congregation who knows the bible but the point is the, you do not need two witnesses at this point this is there is only one witness it still goes before the people to decide now there are two outcomes from this either these people who are judging will decide the person is guilty in which case they'll take the necessary action if it's smoking sling his hook or he's not guilty if he's not guilty something else happens we read verse 18 and 19 the judges will thoroughly investigate and if the man who testified is a false witness and has brought a false charge against his brother, you should do to him just as he has schemed to do to his brother and you must remove what is bad from your midst. So brother A accuses brother B of smoking. It goes before the spiritual brothers and it's decided the second brother never did smoke. The punishment for smoking is get disfellowship. So the person who brought the accusation then he gets disfellowship so there's still a result to this verse 20 those who remain will hear and be afraid and they will never again do anything bad like this among you so the whole congregation will end up knowing that brother a accused brother b of smoking and they will know the result so still there's no cover-up then verse 21 just to finish the chapter you should not feel sorry life will be for life eye for eye tooth for tooth hand for hand foot for foot as far as I'm aware, these are the two go-to places in the Bible that the Watchtower used for the two-witness rule that has caused so many problems. Neither of these are saying you have to have two witnesses to have a crime or have a sin established, otherwise it's not happening. The Matthew one, you have one person confronting somebody else about the sin. The two witnesses then come in to witness the conversation and if there's still no change, it goes before the whole congregation. The one in Deuteronomy recognised that there should be two witnesses. If there aren't two witnesses, there is still a system to happen. It goes before Jehovah, which was the judges and the priests in those days, and then the whole congregation know the outcome. There is absolutely nothing in the Bible that can be used to say there is only one witness, therefore we're not going to investigate this. That is absolutely not in there. And anybody who's wanting to confront the elders about the two-witness rule all you need to do is read what the Bible actually says, and this is their version of the Bible as well. I hope that's helpful to some people. This is a very emotive subject, I'm aware of that, and some very bad things have happened, and I've not mentioned anywhere in this video what these bad things are, but if you don't know, just Google Watchtower and Two Witness Rules, and you'll find out all sorts of things. Thank you.